Hi everybody, this is Harmony and this is my channel called Harmony Stitches. Welcome and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come chat with me about my crafting journey. Um, here we talk about my crafts which usually revolve around cross stitch knitting and crochet. Um, and I just appreciate everyone for coming and hanging out and chatting with me about what I'm working on. I know that there's so many other videos that you could be watching, so I do appreciate you taking time to watch mine. Um, I always like to try to inspire and encourage people. That's kind of been what I've done most of my life. So I hope that you get some inspiration or encouragement here to, to do something. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and get started um, with what I worked on this week and actually last week because I wasn't able to join you last week. Um, there was so much adulting going on over the weekend that I just could not get time to film a video, let alone edit it and get it up on YouTube. So I have two weeks worth of progress to show you. So let's get started. So the first thing I am wearing my knitted poncho that I finished on um, knitting um, over Labor Day weekend. And then yesterday, Saturday, um, the 24th of September, I wove in all of the ends and sewed up the seam and here I am wearing it. Um, if I have enough room on my phone, I will have my family take a picture and I can show you, but I don't have enough space to, sh to stand up. But um, it's, a, it's a rectangle and then you, you fold it in half and then sew up a seam on the shoulder and you end up with a neck hole. And this is, it actually helped me stay warm at church today because it's quite chilly here in Michigan um, today. So I am really liking it. It's, I probably could have stopped knitting mm, three or four inches um, before I actually did. And it would have been a little bit smaller and fit my petite size. But you know what? I'm going to wear it anyway because I spent all the time knitting on it. Um, so it's, it is called the Serena Poncho. It's by Yarnspirations. Well, it's not by Yarnspirations. It's by Red Heart for their Italian story line of yarn. I don't know if they're still selling that yarn, but the pattern is still available on the Yarnspirations website. Just search Serena, S-E-R-E-N-A Poncho, and it'll come right up. It is used making a different yarn, but you can make the poncho with almost any yarn. This is made out of text line brand textures. And all you can see is the um, garter, garter ridges, the garter bumps. And you, there's ribbing. You can't see it very much. I mean, because it's so textured, there's ribbing. Um, I think six, four, four rows of ribbing, I think. Um, and it dep depending on what yarn you use, you might end up with more rows of ribbing. I'm just saying with this yarn, I end, I think I ended up with four. Um, it wasn't hard to knit. It just, like you just were knitting and knitting and knitting. And I heard someone talk the other day and they said, you know how when you're knitting and you kite, every time that you measure, it's like you didn't go anywhere, but you know that you knitted a lot. That's kind of what this felt like at some times. I was knitting and knitting and knitting and I wasn't getting anywhere. But then when I picked it up over Labor Day weekend, it just seemed like it flew and I got it done. So I kind of felt bad that it was sitting there the whole time. Um, but it's done now and I'm super excited. So I think on Wednesday, um, I have um, a virtual conference to do on Wednesday and I'm going to start. And I so I gain time in the morning and the afternoon because I'm doing it virtually from home. So I gain my commute time back. So I'm going to start weaving in the ends in the um, protest is patriotic shawlette thing that I made. So I call it a shawlette because mine ended up smaller than the, um, and maybe it's because it's not blocked yet, but it ended up smaller than what the designers looks like on the pattern. So those are some plans for knitting, but we have lots more to talk about in the knitting realm, but let's show you what I worked on uh, cross stitch wise in the last two weeks because it is a lot so um first the whip wheel came up with where there are bees so I was working on that the last time I talked to you that's what had come up that week and I had the big one 
that I was getting close to a finish on. And I said, if I finish it, I'm going to work on the smalls. So let me show you where I got. Um, this is the pattern. Where There Are Bees by the Prairie Schooler. And I was almost finished. I had a little bit left on the top and I did it. So I had to finish the border along the top and I had to do the words and then finish the hexagon with the, the bear. But then as I'm stitching, the night that I finished this one, I'm like, oh, just a couple more things and I'm done. But then I looked at it and I discovered that I forgot these bees down here, these um, bees around the bee scap. I forgot those. And then most of these pink flowers here were not done either. So I had to put those in really quickly. So I got the big one done. And then I started on the small, the one that has the B. And it took me all of like two days to finish. And I got the B done. And I did run out of floss. Um, When did I run out of floss? I think I ran out of floss on Thursday or Friday night of that week. So what I did was I started working on the other one and I got that one done as well. So I ran out of the 3787 again. So I stopped working on the B. All I had left was the border. And so then I started working on the inside pieces because they were different colors. So I started with a teapot and then went to the B and then went to the B scap. And then once I got on Saturday, I ran to the stitch shop and I got the 3787. So I finished the B board, the border on the B, and then I was able to do the rest of the pieces here on this one. So I finished the entire thing. The entire project is done and it is off of the whip wheel. I was able to delete something. Um, so that is fantastic. I found finishing pieces for all three of these, I wanted the small ones to have a matching finishing piece. My husband bought me two blocks um, from Walmart this morning. We found them for $3 a piece. They don't need to be expensive, people. They don't need to be expensive. Now, the piece that I bought for the big one was probably the priciest piece that I have purchased so far, and it was $12. And that's the most expensive piece by far that I have ever purchased for cross-stitching. Um, and this is why I say that things don't have to be expensive. And I talked to my daughter about this when we were, um, had some alone time a little bit this morning. And I said, this is the thing. While I would want her to keep some of my cross stitching around after I pass away, she's not obligated to do so. I am not stitching heirloom pieces here, except for maybe Pandemic by Long Dog Stitchers and most definitely Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia Nora Corbett. But that piece is actually hers. Lady of the Flag, I'm stitching it for her, so that will be her piece. Now, really what she chooses to do with any of this stuff when I pass away, that's on her. She is not obligated to keep them, and I'm not going to be mad at her if she gets rid of them. So that is that. That's my opinion. I know that may not um, translate to everybody's life, but that's me. And so I said, if in 20 years I pass away, which I hope not because I would be very young. But if in 20 years from now, I still have my cross stitching or I pass away and give it to, and it goes to her, if a piece costs me $3 to mount it on, it's it's um served its time. So I will not be sad at all if she gets rid of my stuff. It's just going to give me enjoyment for as long as I want it to. So I'm not investing a whole ton of money in these pieces, except for Pandemic by Long Dog and Lady the Flag. All these others are just fun decorations for the house. Okay, so then I got that one done on Saturday afternoon because I had to go back to the store and get 3787. Actually, that's a fib. It's a fib. It took me all the way through church service. I watched church last Sunday at home and I was stitching during church like I always do so that way I don't fall asleep. I only do that while I'm at home. Um, and once I, I, it took me all the way through church service, but I finished that second small 
at ch when church was done. So I stole a little bit of Sunday from the next piece that the whip chose or the whip wheel chose. Um, so that's not too bad though, because I finished the big one and two smalls and I'm super happy about it and I cannot wait to finish them. So we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So the whip wheel chose B study by Kathy Barrick. And I did do the little videos to show you the whip spin, the whip wheel spins, but I think I'm going to leave those out this week just because I don't think that I'll have enough space on my phone to do all of them. So um, I, I think I'm going to leave them out and then I'll be able to show you pictures of something else when we get to plans for the future. So B study. Um, it's been a little bit since I worked on this, um, but it did come up in the last couple of months for me to work on. And I'll show you where I'm at. This piece is a little bit on the longer side. Um, okay. It resembles a book cover. And this, this side of the book cover is almost finished. I have a B here in the corner. And last time I stitched almost the entire B and then found out that it was wrong, wrong, wrong. And multiple things, it was in the wrong place. And then I stitched it wrong. So first thing I did was take that B out. I took that B out. Then the next thing that I did was extend the border. I started extending. The way that I do my borders is I use them as a point of reference. So I don't do the entire border because I want to make sure that it lines up all the way around. So I use it as a point of reference and then I stitch and then I use my stitching as point of reference to make sure that my border is on track. So I did bring my border over and up because I already had this corner started. So then I was working on the lace border all the way around. And what I did was I did a little bit on the lace border and then I worked on the B skep and I kept bouncing back and forth because both were equally not boring, but um, it was a big job, right? The B skep was a big job because it's solid stitching, 29 rows of solid stitching. And then the lace border was all the way around and you had to pay attention. I wasn't paying attention when I was on this side of the lace border and I stitched an entire strand wrong and I had to rip it back out. Um, but that's fine because then once I once I got my got it out and started over again, I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. And you got into a rhythm. Same thing with the B skep. I got into a rhythm and I was able to get it done. Um, that was that was some stitching right there on that B skep. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's two different colors, one row and then one row. And then you just kept bouncing back and forth. And then um, what did I do? Brought the border back up and I am almost finished. I just have a couple more stitches. I ran out of floss um, or my strand was done. And then I put in most of, again, you can see my floss ran out and I have a couple of stitches, but I put in that. And then I started working on the B. And then it says... Um, a study of bee culture. And then it has eight bees around here. And then I have two bees here and then the bee in the corner and I'm done. So the next time that bee study by Kathy Barrett comes up on my whip wheel, this will be completed. So the reason why I didn't do the little bees is because there's, I think there's four colors in there. One, two, th three colors and some back stitching, which three stitches of back stitching. And color changing, as we all know, can be time consuming. And I wanted to make as much progress as possible on it this week. So I just did the B skep, the B, and the borders. And that that is huge. That lace border, guys. Like, come on. That lace border is insane. So I am, again, super happy with the progress um, that I've made in the last two weeks. Now I'm forgetting to tell you all of the details for these projects. Um, both projects are stitched on 28 count Monaco. Um, where there are bees, I believe it's antique white, antique white, um, 28 count Monaco with the called for DMC. This one is 28 count Monaco, but coffee tea dyed by myself. And then the called for DMC conversion on the chart because Kathy Barrick usually uses MPI silk and not gonna happen. 
but that's okay. Now, if there was a pattern that called for MPI silk and it was maybe four, maybe five colors, I would consider it. But because this one calls for three, four, five, six, nine colors, no, not gonna happen. Um, because they're at least minimum $5 a piece. And so that's $45 minimum plus tax. We have tax here in Michigan. Not gonna happen, guys, not gonna happen. Um, okay, so then spun the whip wheel, started another project this morning, and I made some great progress so far. Guys, I, like this is so exciting. I should have brought the whip wheel back forever ago, but I was just having fun just picking things at random. So, all right, so I'm going to I'm gonna show you the whip wheel on this one, or at least the picture of what it's supposed to look like. Let's do that. Let's put in the picture of what it's supposed to look like because my pattern is a PDF, and it is Pumpkin Carriage by Owl Force Embroidery. I really enjoy Owl Force Embroidery. Um, they have some great things over there for you. A lot of them are free, but don't be afraid of their paid for patterns because they are fabulous as well. A lot of pretty good stuff over there. So I picked this up and started working on it on the way to church. We went to church in person today. My daughter had to serve, my husband had to serve, so I went with them. And then I got home and um, I don't know if I've ever told you this, the schedule of, of how I kind of get to my video. But we come home from church, we eat lunch, my husband takes a nap, and then after his nap, then I come up because my I'm sitting right above the bedroom and I guess my chair that I'm sitting in makes noise and he can't sleep. So I wait until he gets up from his nap. Um, but it's also football season, so nap is pushed a little bit later than normal, which I'm okay with that because I love football. So anyways, back to pumpkin carriage. Um, so I was working on this while he was napping is why I just said all of that. <laughs> so here we go. Um, so this morning I put in this orange pumpkin here and then this orange pumpkin and then everything around it here, the vines and the pumpkins. So I have put in four orange pumpkins and some a leaf and some vines. That is mirrored over on this side with a big pumpkin in the middle and then another pumpkin banner across the top different than the one on the bottom. So I have less than 25% of this bad boy done and this is gonna get finished this year as well. Oh my gosh, I am super excited. That'll be two projects off the wheel in two weeks and two weeks, three weeks-ish, whatever. So, oh my gosh, super excited, super excited. Um, And it is it is finally time for me to be able to take my like start finishing take my stuff downstairs it's not super hot i'm not going to sweat my behind off so i can sort through all of my finishing supplies and find the perfect piece and get started on finishing but the first is where there are bees and then this one will get finished as well um oh my gosh okay and then i found this yarn i did not buy this yarn my sister gave this to me when I visited her and her family um, Labor Day weekend here, here in the United States, Labor Day weekend was uh, what the Labor Day was the 5th of September, I think. So that previous Saturday, the five, four, three, third of September, she gave me a ball or a cake of It's a Wrap by Red Heart. And this colorway is Circus. And I was super excited because this has, mm, she got it super, what a super deal she got. This has um, 623 yards. And just previously to when she gave this to me, I saw a pattern for like a, a circular shawl, you know, that you, you make. And I'm sure that you've all seen one before. It's a circular shawl with armholes in it. And it was made out of lace weight. And this is, I don't know if it's quite lace weight, but it's a number two. Um, it's a number two. Um, so I was going to make that for her and give it to her as a surprise using the yarn that she bought. And I cannot find it anywhere. I had a tab open on my phone, but I must have del closed that particular tab on accident or the tab crashed on me or something and I cannot for the life of me 
find it, but it was a lace weight circular shawl with armholes. So if you come across it, please let me know. Um, I search Ravelry two or three times extensively, cannot find it. I have a reason to believe that it came through in a newsletter. So if you happen to get newsletters from Knitter's Crochet, and it was a crochet, sorry, it was a crochet um, lacy shawl. Um, so if you find it or you see it somewhere, please let me know because this, I think this yarn would be so pretty in the um, color sequences that it has. So if you, if you have a lead for me, that would be great. Um, okay, so knitting. There was plans and then now there's new plans. As those of you have, that have been watching me several weeks now for or at least the last several weeks, you know that I have been working on clearing my knitting needles so that way I could get started on sweaters because I have one, two, three, four, four sweater quantities of yarn and then a blanket quantity to make a blanket and then dishcloths. So I have lots of things that I want to do, but I felt that um, my uh, my knitting projects were staring at me and weighing heavily on, on my mind. So I was making it a priority to knit them and get them done. And I was doing a good job. And then the last time I filmed, actually, I walked out of the room and my daughter met me in the hallway because her, her bedroom's right over here. And she says, and she shows me her phone. She goes, can you make this? And it was um, a traditional cardigan, um, you know, with the V and then the buttons and it had cables all over it. And I said, oh, <laughs> and of course it was um, a picture from a store. Um, so I am like, well, let me see what we can find on Ravelry. And we found four contenders, not necessarily um, close to what the picture was but sweaters that she likes and that she would want and will will be content to having so if I have enough space on my phone I will show you those pictures and I'll start popping them in there's four of them I think two of them are by Andrea Maori I think it's been a it's been a little bit since I've looked at them but they're all super neat for their own reasons and um so I don't have yarn for it yet, so I can knit on my own plans until I get yarn because we have to narrow the field down and find out which one we want to knit first or which one we can afford yarn for first or whatever. You know how that works out. So there are plans and then there are plans. So oh, I want to do something new. So <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at, but I think that's, I've done so good. I finished the poncho and I finished the shawl, the patriotic shawl, I think in one week, like in the same week, weekend and weekend, I finished the two projects and then I actually wove in the ends and sewn up the seam. So I'm super proud of myself. Um, and then I'm going to be finished. I'm finishing some cross stitch things. So I kind of feel like I'm on the verge of wanting to make something new. So maybe I should break out my dish, dish cloths, uh, dish, dish cloth cotton, and maybe make a couple more dishcloths and maybe I'll feel better about it. I don't know. Um, so I'm, anyway, knitting wise, got to get working on that sweater. Maybe make some dishcloths and maybe get the new start thing out of my system. And then cross, cross stitch wise, I'm going to work on pumpkin carriage. Goal is a finish because I'm really like 75% or more done. And then Lady of the Flag, I need 841 stitches by the end of Friday when I go to bed. So I think I can do it. Um, um, I know I rambled a little bit, um, but I thank you for always bearing with me to getting to the end. Um, I hope to have some great progress to show you next week, some finishes, some ready for display and plans for the next week. So um, until next Sunday, bye.